What's up, nerd peeps? My name is Mark, and welcome back to Mark's Book Rant. Please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss out on any nerdy content coming your way. Today, we are recapping Stormfront Part Dos, which is the first book of the epic fantasy series, The Dresden Files. This rant series is to prepare us for the 16th book of The Dresden Files called Peace Talks, coming out on July 14th. I know lots of us need a recap or refresher to brush off the mental cobwebs before between book releases so this is for you reminder this is not a review but a complete spoiler 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 recap and cliff notes type summary of the book so ready steady and fuego Hare makes his way over to McAnally's pub. It's a sort of wizard version of Cheers. as 13 stools, 13 tables, 13 windows, 13 mirrors, and 13 curved wooden columns. And the purpose of all that is to disperse the grumpy wizard energy flowing throughout the pub. Uh, Harry, you know, greets Mac, you know, best bartender ever. And he picks up a newspaper and finds out that there's like another three eye rampage uh, going on this drug giving you know normal people the the wizard's site so we don't exactly know what the wizard's site is mac you know informs harry that hey I, th I think you've been followed and we get introduced to miss susan rodriguez a latina reporter from the arcane who actually has no reservation about staring Harry right in the eyeballs because she's already soul gazed him. She soul gazed him and passed out. So this soul gaze is a pretty intense and oddly enough it kind of makes the previous scene even more shocking that Johnny Marcone looked Harry right in the eye, soul gazed him and didn't blink. And now we know the second person to soul gaze Harry uh, actually fainted from the experience so what's that say about johnny marcone i think that's saying that he's a bit of a badass and by the end of the conversation trying to fish information about the madison murders through harry she doesn't give her anything and then she tricks him into a date uh, that saturday night at 9 p.m and of course he is a uh, useless to say no she's totally winning that one she leaves he's kind of thinking about his his lady loves and reminisces about his super bad luck with the ladies having murdered his first lady love. So after that, those kind of bad thoughts, he heads on home. Harry gets some of his gear at home. He makes his way to the mighty Blue Beetle, his vehicle of choice that was newly repaired by the amazing mechanic Mike. And he heads on his way to Lake Providence to investigate Victor sells. Uh, Harry's meandering around a, a property a bit, finds a red plastic film canister, uh, puts it in his pack. He might be able to use it later. We learn that a true name has a certain cadence and is made up of a certain words and it has to have the proper tone and inflection. And if you do all that, you can create a magical link. And he's going to do that with a fairy because he needs some backup investigation and there's a fairy by the name of Toot Toot and he's going to uh, try to trap him in a magic circle. A magic circle is another thing that we learn about uh, that it helps focus and limit the parameters of magic used by wizards uh, with a little investment of energy and can also be used as a barrier for magical creatures uh, by the way of using some sort of blood to close the circle. And so Harry calls up Toot Toot, uh, traps him. Toot Toot is pissed. He's pissed off. He, he's, he's mad that he uh, is being trapped. And he starts yelling at Harry, uh, I'll try to do a Toot Toot impression. And he's like, I should have known, you ugly, sneaky, ham-handed, big nose, flat-footed mortal world. And he's like, hey, you Toot. <laughs> so I love Tutu's voice uh, by uh, James Marsters and we kind of learned from this interaction that uh, with fairies contracts are a big thing so after uh, they uh, set a verbal contract up you know Harry can now uh, release Tutu but before he does during their conversation he actually realizes the fairies are uh, looking at Harry they even know that he has a date with Susan and so uh, Harry never knew that before, so he's now paranoid that, hey, why are the fairies checking me out? So Tutu goes, he comes back super quick, and gives them some crucial info, 
one piece of information that is super important is that fairies love pizza. So Harry promises a uh, to some pizza and tries to get him back on track about the, the case and he actually finds out the reason uh, he's bringing up pizza is because at the house uh, the previous night they were having some intercourse and they ordered some pizza to recover the strength. That's all he knows and he just kind of takes off. As soon as he takes off, Warden Morgan whips out his sword and lets Harry know that he's broken his probation, which they call the Doom of Damocles, and he is going to immediately uh, execute him. And so, <laughs> of course, this is, you know, Harry's luck. He actually wiggles out on a technicality on the law and proceeds to slug Morgan in the face. During their conversation, going back and forth, um, they're talking smack, and Harry realizes that, oh man, the White Council and Morgan thinks that Harry actually did the Madison killing. So now the Madison killings are super important to Harry because he has to get himself out of the fire. By the end of that conversation, Morgan shows Harry how to do a real jaw-dropping punch and lays Harry out and walks away letting Harry know that, hey, we're looking at you and, and we're going to take you out. Uh, one thing that happens every time Harry interacts with Morgan is that he starts thinking about his past and his mentor that taught him how to use magic back in the day and it looks like his mentor tried to seduce him with the black magic and try to kill him and somehow Harry was able to actually kill his mentor but unfortunately he did it with magic and when you kill somebody with magic it looks like there is a rule set by this white council and if you break that rule there is only one sentence the sentence is death so it looks like he was going to die but he got out through a loophole of self-defense with magic and no one could really argue it because no one was there so he was placed under this wizard probation it was called the doom of damocles one time mess up and you are immediately executed now harry has to find the killer or he's going to take the rap harry gets home to his basement apartment and giant overlord cat named mister then heads down to his sub basement to wake up his smart mouth perverted genius cocky spirit of air skull named bob bob actually winds up extorting harry into making a love potion for bob's help to make harry to escape potions and during the making of the potions we learn that harry can use his emotions somehow to fuel his magic and provide energy to the spell but it leaves him completely exhausted and drained afterwards after making the potions harry goes to bed and only really has to worry about talking to a vampire, locating a missing husband, avoiding the wrath of the White Council, and finding a killer before the killer finds Harry. Cakewalk. Harry talks to a stressed out and angry Lieutenant Murphy on the phone, and we find out Special Investigations, SI, is essentially the scapegoat for all bad press in Chicago PD. And Murphy needs answers to the case, and she needs it quick. Harry goes over to Va Vampire Bianca's mansion, and of course the Blue Beetle promptly dies in the driveway. We then learn that it's not just crosses that hurt vampires, but actually any talisman of faith, such as Harry's five-pointed pentacle, and so luckily he still has a five-pointed pentacle when he gets to meet Bianca. And when he meets Madame Bianca, of course she is smoking hot. But about five seconds into the meeting, Harry pisses her off, and Bianca leaps to attack him. Uh, Harry barely was able to, to get his hanky out, which is magically filled with sunlight, and hits it uh, on Bianca, which rips away her flesh mask uh, to reveal her true, grotesque, bat-like self. And she flies across the room and hits the bookshelf. He's able to hold her at bay, for a little bit with his pentacle and gets a sworn truce for the duration of the conversation and Bianca's flesh mask immediately comes back and she's creepily hot again but of course Harry can't forget how she really looks and Bianca hates him for it. Uh, Harry gives Bianca another threat of his wizard's death curse and later in that conversation is able to get the name of Linda Randall from Bianca and a promise of a phone number to contact her. 
but Harry has to leave out of there immediately because he's bleeding and Bianca warns Harry right before he leaves that she'll remember the night and make Harry regret it. Bianca's assistant Paula comes in and Bianca immediately hits her with the saliva which seems to clearly be an addictive narcotic and Bianca begins feeding viciously upon Paula. Uh, Harry pretty much runs away and calls up Linda Randall who proceeds to hang up on Harry but luckily not before he hears the airport intercom in the background of Linda's phone. Harry finds Linda at the airport after another flirty hang-up conversation and approaches the limo. He is able to see through her flirty conversation and distraction but still gets no good information from her. But finally Linda's spooky bosses, the seemingly emotionless faced Beckett's get to the limo. Uh, Harry has to secretly pass Linda a business card before they leave. Uh, since he didn't get any info from Linda, he has to follow up on the Toot Toot Pizza lead. When Harry calls up the pizza place, it's the only one that can deliver to the Lake Providence house, and he finds that Victor Sells already called looking for the nosy delivery boy who actually winded up seeing someone else that same night taking photos. So now the red canister that Harry found makes sense. That's where we'll wrap it up today for part two of Stormfront. Please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss out on any nerdy content coming your way. I'll post part three as soon as possible, and I'll catch you nerd peeps on the next one. Peace out!